thank you so much for coming today. I'm very happy to be here and I'm very happy to discover, to, to, to be part of this event organized by Chesopis and Swiss Embassy of Ukraine, Swiss em, uh, Embassy of Switzerland in Ukraine. And um, I live in Switzerland for two years and um, this is one of my best experience ever. This is an amazing country, this full of opportunities, smart, uh, lean, all best, what we can imagine about how should work business, government and um, um, ecosystems are well established there. And um, the happy, I'm happy to be able with a guest to, we all of us happy to be a guest to explore this, to deliver this and um, to find out all together how we can leverage this opportunity for developing ecosystem, business and the culture for Ukrainian companies. And um, as a first, uh, first speaker who come today directly from Zurich is Patrick, who, is, who works for uh, Swiss Global Enterprise, is a company or it's public, it's, um, com let's say company, right, Patrick? It's a company which helps to build bridges in between Switzerland and other countries in two ways. So it helps to explore opportunities of Switzerland, of this country for us and vice versa. It helps Swiss, um, Swiss based companies to find leverage and be connected with other countries. So please welcome Patrick and um, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's a big pleasure um, to be here tonight. First of all, I thank you to share your free evening in a beautiful summer evening with two people from Switzerland and more uh, support from Switzerland. So thank you for your time, first of all. I'm very glad to be here. Um, who has been to Switzerland already? Please sign that with your hand. Oh, okay, so then uh, you know everything. <laughs> so I won't touch about all the beautiness you have seen by, by traveling to that country. So we really focus on the business side of Switzerland tonight. And if I can summarize it in two words or four words, Switzerland, small country, big business. The world is getting more pictures every day. It's a very exciting place and it's very exciting because more and more digital elements, more and more technology makes a totally new perception of what's happening on, on a global scale and also in Switzerland. So many pictures you see every day, um, your eyes take on and you can consume through um, many, many channels, and this will change and is already changing many um, businesses today. This is a huge, huge number which is expected to be stored digitally in this year. To store so much data, we need very big capacities, we need infrastructure uh, to support and have access to all those data which is collect being collected and shared with everyone today. And it will for sure, and it's already changing the, the way we live, the way we work, and the way products are developed and sold and consumed. Therefore you need capacity as I said, and I brought this first news maybe to you that on a global comparison, the two strongest computers in, in performance are located in China, and the third largest computer, so a very strong computer, is located in, the in Switzerland, in the southern canton of Ticino, and that's the performance um, this computer in peak times would be able to perform. It's very important because all big data which is coming around to analyze and predict specific industry uh, forecasts, they need capacity, and Switzerland is able to offer that to you. But Switzerland also is, as you know, all the ones which have raised your hands, quite in the center of Europe, 8.3 million inhabitants. 25% of our um, population is coming from abroad, are foreigners. 
we, we are able to have them peacefully living together and giving most of them great jobs and that's an achievement of a democratic country um, in the middle of Europe. Most European cities can be reached in one to two hours traveling time. So if your clients are ba mainly located in Europe, it's easy to fly out in the morning and fly back in the evening. We have three international airports and their daily flights are leaving to the most important business cities in Europe. In Geneva, maybe you don't know, uh, the, the first protocol of the World Wide Web has been invented. Afterwards, of course, it has been explored and professionalized other ways, but invention has been created in Geneva many, some years ago. Not many years ago, but some years ago. And our suggestion is, if you're interested in the European market, more specifically in the most biggest countries around Switzerland, Switzerland serves you as a hub for first testing your products, testing your services in a market because we have three languages there. We have the French language, we have the German language and the Italian language. And you can test that out in three languages and when it works, you expand your business into in the North, Germany, France and Italy and of course UK and all the other destinations you want to target them to. But it's not only the digital um, speed and, and competence and know-how which is strongly there in Switzerland, it's also a hotspot for research and development. Our country invests more than 3% of our annual GDP in research and development. It's small and high performing and it's a country with, f with uh, brightful minds. Why? Because we, we don't have any resources from the ground. We had to be open to treat and trade with many nations internationally from the beginning on. And we just had mainly our brains to be smart and to be ready for global competitiveness. Competitiveness, where we are in seven years now in a row, ranked among top destinations worldwide. And it's one of our elements to always try to optimize and find best solutions for the client. When we ask the population of Switzerland, how digital ready are you, Swiss people? That's the start of an inquiry of a survey which runs still today, so people can vote and, and register. And between the many topics of calling the digital environment, basic digital in uh, infrastructure, Swiss people for their own, they say 93%, we are really strong there. International competitiveness is one of the very strong aspects and the ICT industry itself. I brought here one company which two years ago settled in Switzerland. This company is named Xappo. It's the biggest custody for Bitcoins coming out of the Silicon Valley in uh, California. And his CEO will address some, a few words to you to say why he selected Switzerland and what is his experience. If we ask the, the companies which have already settled in Switzerland, why did you choose Switzerland? What are your three main motivations to look uh, into a new country? Then we have often the three, following, the three following answers. First, new markets. So they want to expand into new markets. Second answer we got, innovation. They want to cooperate with some other institutions to innovate their product to more, be more competitive than, than their um, their peers in the same industry. And the third re, um, answer we got is processes. So how can they optimize their current structure by selecting Switzerland as their center of excellence in the European market? Some of the companies choose Switzerland because they want to brand their product, their service with the Swiss brand, which means quality, trust, uh, technology, innovation. So those are the most frequent reasons why companies invest. Of course, this always is based by a very reliable government. We have a multi-party system which um, and assures stability and long-term orientation for you as company um, you would like to invest. It's a decentralized structure, so the 26 states called cantons in Switzerland, they are independently by far almost autonomous, so they can really do um, their laws and they compete against each other, so that's the benefit for from the system to you as entrepreneur. Swiss education, seven of 12 universities are world known, so the education level in Switzerland is unique and great as well in the technology field. 
where we have the computer science department uh, in Lausanne and in Zurich to educate and train the new um, research-driven cracks of the future. Innovation, as I told, Switzerland often on top of the list um, to always be better than the competition. If you look a bit more on the labor market, we see that it's easy to attract talents to Switzerland. We have a migration law which is in place, which we have free movement of people within the European Union. We have still some quota for non-EU uh, citizens who want to um, come and work in Switzerland. But it's a highly attractive magnet to go to. Unemployment rate traditionally very low, around 3%. Um, and in the f all females in the working age, almost 80% are here in the, in the labor market active. If we look more into the ICT industry, um, we have here uh, roughly 19,000 ICT companies. Most of them, really most of them, are between one and nine employees. We have, of course, a few major and some very big ones, but most of them are small and medium-sized companies in Switzerland. They make about 4% of the country's GDP, and uh, Switzerland at all ranks sixth in um, network readiness on a global scale. If you think, or already now today know, yes, we want to set up our company, I, I can tell you what is, what is needed to do so. Of course, you need to have the product or a service or the business idea which, which has potential for the European or for the Swiss market. That's the first. But if you're convinced of this, you need one person resident in Switzerland. It can be a Swiss, can be a non-Swiss, doesn't matter, but this person should be residing in Switzerland, so with a resident permit. And then, together with a, cons a consultant, a lawyer, a fiduciary, you are within two to three weeks able to set up your own company. For that, you need a minimum capital of, of Swiss francs or US dollars, 20,000. That's the minimum for the company. Of course, you can put in more if you want to put in more. Afterwards, you will have your own Swiss company, and of your course, consider you have running costs in Switzerland, which might be a bit higher than running costs of the company here. Uh, living costs, so take that into consideration. If you are there or get started, I've just put here some of the associations will, which will help you along that way, getting connected to the industry, to the local industry. Uh, there are Digital Switzerland, uh, they started two years ago providing support and, and, tr and putting the, the message out in the world that Switzerland um, is on the way to become the digital innovation hub globally, um, with also strong cooperation with the government. Uh, then we have Kickstart Accelerator, where they screen every year um, 30 startups globally, where you can apply to present and pitch and take advantage of the ecosystem in Switzerland. Crypto Valley is a, a young organization as well, um, based in the German-speaking part of Switzerland. We'll expand to the other parts as well. And Elp ICT Tech Nation, that's a, an organization active in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. Our company is here today, but also in the future. If you have questions on how to do business, with whom to do business, how to set up your company, here we will have uh, the talk later on. And I'm, again, very really happy and thank you for being here and sharing that moment with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you for this warm welcome, uh, not welcome, overview about Switzerland. And if you have any questions, we can address, you can address them during the panel discussion. And um, then we are going to another topic which actually now nowadays are the most let's say the most dynamic the most uh, impressive and so on an ICO and um, as we all know Switzerland became one of the global hubs for global destinations leading destinations for doing such such um, uh, for doing ICO yes and um, today we have another guest, is Pat, uh, Andre from uh, KPMG Switzerland, from KPMG Zurich, who will explore, explain aspects, legal and tax aspects of the ICO and their view and their experience, because currently they did more than, how many ICOs? We are currently at our fourth ICO. 
four, but four, four right ICOs. So please welcome Pat uh, Andre. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you, Julia, again for this uh, nice introduction. My name is uh, Andre Gudel. I'm with KPMG. I'm an economist, uh, and I'm working mainly with large multinational companies here in uh, um, Switzerland. Recently, I shifted my focus uh, 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 towards blockchain and uh, cryptocurrencies for several reasons. First of all, uh, as we all know, this business is uncharted territory for many aspects. And next to that, Switzerland has emerged in the past, uh, I would say, year as a center for token-generating events, as I prefer to call it, instead of international coin offerings. Uh, Julia taught me to be A, brief, so that we have more time for uh, discussions. Uh, later on, and B, not explain you too much about the basics of initial coin offering or token generating events. So my first question to you, who is not familiar with uh, TGI or ICO? Well, very few ones. Uh, so I will, uh, what's about that? that's what I actually suspected. Are we okay? We're waiting. But let me quickly start with a very brief introduction into Swiss, Switzerland IT industry. We heard a lot about uh, uh, you know, uh, how attractive Switzerland is. Uh, there are three main drivers which I believe are, are, are relevant uh, uh, here. Highlighting uh, uh, three companies which uh, actually started the whole um, uh, um, IT uh, move in Switzerland. One is Google. Google has its European research center in Switzerland with about, what's that? Okay, it has about uh, uh, 1,500 people in Zurich for development. IBM has its research center also in Switzerland. They do all the European research based out of Zurich area. And there's Temenos, which is a leading fintech company. As you are well aware of, uh, Switzerland is a leading uh, uh, center for banking. And together with these uh, uh, IT companies, uh, um, there was a merger in the last years where uh, fintech companies have started to get active. Um, but that's not actually what you want to hear. You want to hear about uh, ITO, token, tokenization, tokenization of future revenue streams or assets. That's how I define a TGI event or an ICO. Uh, many people see in ICO a way of quickly generating huge amounts of money. You are all aware of the ICOs which took place in the recent months. Um, I prefer to look at the ICO or a TGI as a possibility to slice and dice future revenue streams or future assets. And I prefer to look at an ICO as a mean of more efficiently distribute such assets or such revenue streams among a larger group of investors. For me, if I talk about the TGI, I talk about the digital crowdfunding possibility as an alternative to other funding possibilities, uh, which I will uh, show to you uh, in a few seconds. Um, we as a KPMG are actually quite active in this field. This is a study which was done in June 2017. You see here uh, actually you know, the amount of uh, money which was raised through ICOs. Uh, what we see here is in uh, uh, on up to uh, June 2017, there were roughly 1.2 billion uh, um, in US dollars raised via ICO. So the amount is massively growing and we don't see currently in what direction they will go. As we are all aware of, there are regulating issues, regulatory issues which are coming up and which are becoming uh, maybe uh, as a, a break to this development. Um, forms and coins of, uh, 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 forms of coins and tokens. As I explained to you, I'm an economist. I look at it from a more uh, broader perspective. There are a lot of different aspects how you can 
actually design your token in your white paper. Um, I don't want to go too much into detail here. One thing, profit or revenue token, that's actually you know, where I put this exclamation mark. That's why it's becoming quite complicated. Um, you want to avoid that your token is seen as a, as a security for various reasons which we can discuss uh, later on. But then there are a lot of other possibilities how you design your token, access token, payment token, government, uh, governance tokens, a lot of varieties. And that's the beauty about an ICO. You can actually choose how you want to participate, to part, uh, how you want to let your participants at a token generating event uh, be involved in your company without giving away property rights or, or, um, or, 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 or voting rights. If you look at the difference between an ICO and a, uh, an IPO, I think at the beginning, uh, people actually wanted to uh, show that there is actually a closeness between an IPO and an ICO. We believe this is not necessary. That's why we call it a token generating event. An ICO or token generating event is fast, it's inexpensive, it is little regulated, and it reaches out to the large community of the cryptocurrency uh, holders, while an IPO is more complicated, takes more time, is highly regulated, and also expensive. What is actually, and quite often overlooked, and where we see a similarity, marketing an ICO or an IPO is actually equally demanding. You see these huge funds which have been raised with uh, uh, Tezor or with a banker, but behind that is a massive marketing campaign which has, in certain cases, for instance with Tezo, took on three years. The people who raised the fund with Tezo, they have been with the cryptocurrency community for the last, uh, they started in 2011, so for the last six years they were actually active there, building up a community. So the investment into the marketing is quite substantial. Uh, requirements for uh, token generating events, we have put together certain requirements which we believe are just absolutely vital for a successful TGI. We see many TGIs which never actually you know, uh, will happen because they have not a transparent and verified team. You have to imagine you buy a token. What do you have? I mean, you have basically no rights. The only thing you can trust in is actually the team behind it. The names, you know, if you have uh, experienced ex uh, entrepreneurs or people with a very solid technology background, that's extremely important. Then what we also require if you work with a token generating event or support a token generating event is actually some kind of proof of work, uh, a prototype, project codes, or at least a very detailed white paper which explains what the company wants to reach. A business plan is also important. Uh, I was recently at the presentation where they announced the token generating event and then somebody was asking, hey, can you explain us how you want to make money with that? Um, there was basically no answer. They were just looking into how they can raise money, but actually how they can be pro become profitable. They never thought about it. What we also want to see is including a cap. You know, those TGIs where you have no cap, which goes just you know, through the roof, if it goes well, this is not our cup of tea. That's not where we as KPMG are working with. Risk and opportunity map. We ask actually that you know, in a white paper, you have a, a opportunity and a risk mapping telling actually the people who participate, and please note, I'm not speaking out to investors, I'm talking about people who want to participate in your project, that they see what are the risks and, uh, and, and, uh, and opportunities. Then we, that's not what we're asking for, but that's what we're actually highly recommending. Have a marketing plan, know your to uh, token generating community, know who you want to address with. Maybe you want to go after American uh, cryptocurrency holders, not a good idea. Maybe you want to go after Chinese cryptocurrency holders. Maybe a good idea, I don't know. Qualified project partners, extremely important. You need a solid law firm who is experienced in that, in the taxation and the token analysis, white paper analysis, and then finally the approvals from the FINMA or from other authorizations, or, uh, financial market authorities. And what is also quite uh, useful is availability of a little bit of seed money. A TGI is not extremely expo expensive, but it is expensive for some uh, startup companies. I mean, you can do it with no costs, and I will come back to an example, or you can invest some money, preferably seed money, from a venture capitalist or from an uh, angel investor, better, 
uh, to make it right. I have here a list of uh, the uh, countries which I have looked at, or we have looked at as KPMG, uh, uh, which are usually seen as, as, as possibilities for, for, um, for a TGI. US, um, quite uh, difficult nowadays. Uh, DAOE case is probably something you have away, uh, you're aware of, uh, SEC ruling uh, last two months ago. Protostar came out uh, two days ago. The Protostar guys were, you know, just a, a bunch of developers who launched their ICO. Uh, and then uh, right after launch, they raised about 60,000 US dollars. They got a call from the SEC from two investigators telling them, um, uh, uh, asking them what exactly they were doing. And the result of that was they immediately stopped the ICO and sent back all the money they re requi uh, required. Uh, they collected United Kingdom, unclear. Switzerland, so far, uh, comparatively good. We have a FINMA, the Swiss market. Uh, financial market authorization authority, they are quite open uh, and they are able to uh, give rulings about uh, the, the type of tokens. Uh, another country which we believe is important uh, is Singapore, but I've just heard in the discussion before that there were also some changes. China are currently quite questionable. Uh, they actually, actually banned ICOs last week and then Russia not clear uh, as well. So um, here are examples of um, token generating event which took place in Switzerland, Ethereum, very well known, four years ago. And then you have the T3, uh, Tezo, the Bancor, and we supported Sentiment, Celorida, and Moneta. Um, those are clients of KPMG. By the way, KPMG is the, one, is the only big four which is currently doing, to my knowledge, ICOs. And uh, we support those companies actually not only in Switzerland, but uh, across, across the world. Uh, in terms of a timeline, um, to make it sure, uh, short, uh, for us, our experience, about four months if you want to do it right, starting with the right path with drafting, then going into um, the setup of the website, you know, to promote the ICO, um, uh, um, uh, the pre-ICO token sale to raise some uh, startup money, uh, tax and regulatory planning, it's uh, quite important, and I will come back to that uh, during our conversation. Uh, and then the marketing, extremely important as well. And then you do the token generating event. And then once you have collected the tokens, the custody, where you want to keep your tokens, that's uh, uh, an issue. We saw uh, on the video uh, a company which is offering that. It's still not really solved 100%. That's quite complicated. And then what's even more complicated, and uh, nobody's actually thinking about that, once you have raised the tokens, you want to exchange into fiat money you're going to find a bank which is accepting this money because of uh, money laundering uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, money laundering issues. And we take care of that as well. So that's all. Here's our team uh, which is working uh, on TGIs uh, um, in, in Switzerland. And again, we do that with our colleagues across the world. So uh, Julia, I hope it was brief enough. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. But may I ask you one question right after? Regarding the different jurisdictions, um, you mentioned, or it was written as well, that different jurisdictions consider ICOs tokens as a, like they have different legal framework for them, right? So one, have, one considers them as an asset, another as a securities. And uh, this is a question from people from non-financial world. What is the difference in between assets and securities? And um, why is it much easier to work with jurisdictions which treat them as assets? Well, to be clear, I mean, uh, every jurisdiction... Uh, to be clear, every jurisdiction, including Switzerland, they, they, they look at the token model and they decide whether it's a security, it's more like a share, where you get uh, some sort of dividends or interests, or bluntly speaking, you give money and somebody's making something with this money and giving you a part of the profit. This is seen as a security. And then you have a utility. A utility is more like, uh, I would say, a voucher. It can be like you get the voucher to have access to a golf club or something like this. It's a access to a service or to a product which will be f developed in the future. And this is the main difference. And if it is like a utility or a, toke, uh, or, 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 or a voucher, 
it is not regulated by the financial market uh, authorities in Switzerland and in other countries as well. However, to be very clear, you can get a ruling from the Swiss authorities uh, confirming that your token is actually a utility, you're fine. But then still, go to the US to accept uh, investors uh, or, in, or money or, or token buyers from the US, you might have a problem going forward with the US uh, Security and Exchange Commission. That's why uh, if you look at the ICOs, many times you have to click on, I'm not an American citizen. And now going forward again with the Chinese, we don't know what's going on in China currently. Are you allowed to accept? Are you allowed to accept uh, cryptocurrency uh, 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 from, from China? No problem from Switzerland, but maybe the Chinese authorities won't be happy as well. So what we recommend, depending on your market, uh, or on, your, on, on the group of, 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 of people who, would you, who you would like to see participating in your TGI or ICO, we should double check with the local uh, um, uh, authorities in those countries. Thank you so much. As we can see, we have an expert in this topic, and um, actually, this is nowadays this is really kind of knowledge difficult to find. Yeah, we have so many noise about around this topic. So we like it to have you today, and um, we move to a panel discussion. Please stay. Um, so I prepared some questions, but. Let's, um, we will try to explore right, those opportunities to give you more color on this. And please welcome our um, presenters, but also, also um, we have our partners, actually representatives of companies who has extensive business in uh, uh, Switzerland who are well established there, who has their headquarters or rep offices. And um, please welcome Maxim Davkapoli. Uh, he represents <coughs> okay. he represents GMS. Um, maybe s most of you heard about this, but I would remind that it, this is one of the leading telecommunication companies, company in our region in um, Eurasia, let's say, yes, and uh, headquartered in Tsuk. And the other company also headquartered in Tsuk, which you know very well, is Luxoft, and um, Vadim Parkin, representative of Luxoft. Vadim is a program manager in Luxoft, and uh, he runs several clients in from that area and has extensive experience. Yeah, and also I should mention about um, Vadim, about Maxim, uh, that he finished um, University of Geneva. He lived there for many years, so he know and bear many insights about the country and how to develop a business there, right? Correct. Okay, so um, first questions which I prepared and first question might be addressed to Luxoft yeah, to explore, to explain about advantages which you, as a, yeah, as a leading manager, feel experienced with Switzerland comparing to other jurisdictions. How would it help you to grow a business to, 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 I don't know, to close contracts right, and to build sustainable teams and products? Okay. Thank you. I guess uh, that was the main reason for our company to go to Switzerland. It's a growth. So uh, it started like a small office in Zug for where several sales were situated and eventually it grew to our uh, headquarters. And currently more than 100 people actually working in Switzerland uh, for different clients. Uh, it really helps because Switzerland is a, com is a country with really good reputation, of course. And for us, as a company that provides software development services for the leading uh, businesses in the world, like big banks, I know probably we are providing services to three of top 10 banks in the world. And all of them have represent uh, representative offices in Switzerland. So it's very important for us to build the relationship with them and, of course, be there on the ground close to them. 
And of course, for, for our clients, it's very important that we are, we are there, not only because of some low watt uh, in Switzerland itself, but actually because when company is located in Switzerland, it already brings trust to clients because it's not easy and it's really expensive to open a company there. It's not only 20 thousands when you're operating big money, it's actually m much more. And if you have an office there, if you have established business and history in Switzerland, most likely big companies would like to work with you. It's, it's very easy. So we had a, a lot of samples when our sales representatives came to offices of others, other companies on, I wouldn't say the big contracts, like uh, some uh, electronic funds, uh, with trading, etc., and when you're given a card that your head office is in Switzerland, it gives you massive advantage, advantage comparing to companies that, for example, located in Ukraine, Russia, Minsk, etc. I think compared to other European jurisdictions, oh. yeah, maybe Baltics, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't Just talk about Baltics a lot because I'm not sure about them, but comparing to France, Germany, uh, UK, it's not European now, but still, uh, UK and others, uh, still it's more expensive like a location, but it's less expensive in operational when you're operating in big contracts. Again, taxation is much more flexible, taxes are lower, that's simple. Uh, regulations are much more flexible than in other countries because from our experience, we had an experience when we had an opportunity to talk with local authorities about immigration. And we actually tried, uh, tried at least, we were not really successful there. Uh, we went to local authorities, they sat with us and we had a discussion about how we can bring more people working in Switzerland under our legal entity. By the set with us, we were discussing them, and eventually, right now, we have uh, one to five, I guess, people working in Switzerland comparing to local employees, and employees actually came from other countries. Uh, I don't think it's working, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just keeping it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it should be. Uh, okay, so close, close. anyway, it's very easy to reach authorities in Switzerland comparing to other countries. Probably Luxembourg is quite the same here, but still comparing to any other country, it's much more easier. So if you want to get some flexibility, if you get, want to get some special deal with government, you should go there. For example, FINMA, they would be very open to create even special permits for your company. It's not cheap, it's not easy, but it's possible. And if you will try to do it in Germany, you should do it. You shouldn't do it. That's it. So, if I may, to conclude, it's very flexible jurisdiction, open for entrepreneurs, open for people who want to do business, and um, they always open for conversations and to find and joint and mutual solutions. And uh, as Alexo works with enterprise segment mostly, maybe we can also explore and you mentioned that it gives you access to customers explore that not only enterprise segment in switzerland is so interesting and there are other segments such as sme and startups which is growing fast and brings so many interesting opportunities and um, maxim can add some color on this yeah, thank you for the thank introduction you. thank you for invitation and uh, warm introduction again so I'm happy to be here and uh, say a couple of words about our experience, GMS experience of work and uh, business development in Switzerland. Actually, recently, recently GMS celebrated 11th year of a uh, company birthday and 11th year ago, GMS was uh, registered uh, in a Zug. Yeah, and since this, uh, we are developing our company and became one of the largest uh, provider of uh, an, on, on the telecom market and actually um, mm, what I want to say so why Switzerland for us for, for example for GMS I just please raise your hand who are from telecom industry here just 
not, not okay. And from IT industry, it's pretty much like close to telecom. Probably um, some of you know uh, the availability of the system for nines, 99.99. Nine nine. Yeah, it's very important uh, like availability of the services and systems for clients. And uh, you can uh, provide this availability through different uh, uh, activities. Yeah, you can uh, implement ETL, uh, ETL approach, you can implement all the operation uh, proper IT operation uh, procedures and etc. and uh, and provide availability of uh, telecom services like 99.99 percent, and it's technical part. Yeah, from other sides, uh, from other sides, there is also the um, uh, business environment and uh, environment side. Yeah, when you need also to be to uh, to operate in a stable economic environment and stable uh, political environment and uh, uh, what Switzerland provides actually yeah that's uh, you can easily provide technical support nine nine point nine in Ukraine but uh, to be honest and said to and I'm said to say this, that uh, Ukraine does not provide uh, economic and political stability as Switzerland do. And that's and actually it's uh, another point. One, uh, for example, GMS located and uh, registered in Switzerland to be a, a reliable partner for our clients and our partners and provide stability uh, of our um, services not only from technical si uh, point of view but also from the um, environmental point of view. And I mean, I, I mean, uh, business environment point of view. And um, yeah, it's about <laughs> so country also gives reliable technical technological facilities to yep. tech facilities. I also have to have something to add to this because I also had two important topics which might be explored and it which was not were not explored before the culture and how it helps to grow culture in a company. And uh, what is special about this culture and taxes? Because it's actually one of the, in Tuk, for example, there are more than 100 headquarter, headquarters of international global companies. And they come there because of tax reasons, right? So this is also kind of aspects which might bring huge value to your company and to its uh, financial health. Thank you. Uh, Switzerland is well known as, as, a, as, a, as a low tax jurisdiction. Two things to that. Uh, I prefer to speak about competitive taxation and not low taxes, because there are countries which are more low, much low taxes. Uh, uh, and next to that, um, Switzerland is not, or the Swiss authorities are never, you know, cutting deals with investors. What we are doing is we are applying the law. And what Switzerland is, is has as a, as a strong point is the tax authorities are issuing so-called tax rulings. So you sit down with the tax authorities, you show your business model, and according to the law, your business model will allow you for a very competitive tax, tax um, uh, effective tax rates. So you get these in advance forward-looking decisions on how your profit will be taxed. It's not about the highest profit, but about how you, uh, uh, what will, inc will be included in the taxable basis. But it's too, Switzerland is uh, quite competitive in terms of taxes. And you notice that Zug has uh, really attracted a lot of companies in the pharmaceutical industry, in the, in, the, in the commodities trading industry, and in fintech industry. But I wouldn't say mm -hmm. it's only about taxes. It's more, it's about the whole entire network and uh, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the the cluster, which it's is indeed, right. especially for pharmaceuticals, there are huge pharma cluster, which attracts and hosts the major players, global players such as um, Roche, Biogen, Johnson and Johnson has huge office there, and the culture. So if we explore it, yeah. uh, this is my favorite topic actually, because well, culture in Switzerland is very very high, and when people reach there, actually has some reasons to be rich because they work hard, work uh, 
um, product in a productive way and an efficient way. And also, business environment, and business relations are on a very high level. It's high level of trust. And uh, this is my experience as a foreigner and expert, but um, how, how, what has, what, I mean, can you explore the special how Swiss people were able to achieve this high level of standards? Uh, I think uh, it started all quite early in, in Switzerland. Uh, there was there was no jobs around, and people had to go out of the country to to earn their money. And they afterwards came back, and they kept this mentality, knowing that only with hard work you will survive and you will achieve. And it's today shown in in contracts. Working contracts are often all all the time made between you, as single worker, with your employer. So it's an individual contract, mainly about the skills you bring in, the expectation and ambition you have, and the targets of the company. And with a very flexible labor law, which enables both of you, you to change on short term, but also the employer to change on short term, this motivation keeps on on a daily basis. In other countries in Europe, it's a different also working culture. So they are frame conditions, you know, contract ruling certain industries, and there you are much more protected as an employer um, uh, than, than as an employee. So this kind of culture is, is important. Further than more, we had a vote uh, six years ago where some parties wanted to have one week more holiday. We currently have between four and five weeks holiday a year. And there was a public vote in Switzerland. Everyone could vote, say, yes, I want a six weeks, or I don't want to have six weeks. And 66% of our Folks, they voted no. We don't want more holiday because we are convinced only by hard working we will remain competitive on a global level. But if you talk about culture, it's maybe also an open mindedness because we are really uh, surrounded from many big countries, and we know that the openness and the tolerance of our of our citizens are key to to have this um, all these bilateral agreements we have as a country free trade agreements with, with the most important countries, a double tax treaties with the most important industries. So Switzerland always was open doing uh, business with other countries. We have seen in Anders' presentation, Switzerland say Bitcoin yes, other countries say Bitcoin no. no. Um, most European countries say Chinese business or, or M&A business we want to control. Switzerland says let's do it, it's open economy, so buyers and sellers, they meet anyhow. Just a few of the examples. But then there's not the, the Swiss culture. Um, if you be in Geneva, where we have 40% foreigners, it's a totally different flavor, totally different culture than in, in Bern or maybe in Zurich. Um, it depends a bit on the population, the mix of the population. You have specific rhythms. Um, very fast, pulsive, impulsive life in, in Zurich, a bit mm -hmm. slower in, in central Switzerland often, where people have more time to say hello, goodbye, how are you, how is your aunt doing. Uh, this is not happening that much in other districts. And so it's a broad variety on, on a two hours drive through our country, north south, or on a five hours drive east west, a very small space on that planet, which is a huge diversity. Thank you so much. So let me conclude this part. M most of you might have in your mind that oh, Switzerland is a is very expensive destination, but in fact, return of these expenses or even outcome you can get out of this expense are much higher, higher than anywhere else. And if set up a conclusion, it has very friendly ecosystem and tax environment, very high culture, one of the highest in the world of work culture, I mean, labor culture, la labor efficiency, efficiency of stuff in there. Then we have um, uh, technical sites, reliable technical sites, which if you set up your products, your uh, your software, your solutions there, it will give you much more uh, advantages in a global level. And the flexibility of talking with regulator, with government, and the access to a very um, nice companies to, to provide the services for. And actually this is um, and from my side and from our homework. And uh, maybe you have some questions to address regarding ICO, regarding some topics which you can have in mind, please. Uh, yes.
Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for coming to Ukraine and delivering this lecture. Uh, I, have one, I have one very simple and sophisticated question to all of you gentlemen. And uh, could you please name, based on your professional and personal experience, one canton which you would recommend to open business in? And please um, uh, name one reason, one main reason why. I will start answering this uh, really sophisticated question because we don't know what you're really aiming for. And uh, first we would like to, quest to question you, what is your aim, what are your key criteria you want to have a look? But that would be my, <laughs> my first question to you. I mean, there are no secrets at all, but again, I mean, if I would have a, a different selection maybe that you would have or, or that you had, uh, for some companies, uh, you know, uh, a place with many international bank headquarters is the right one, with other, all the medical technology supplier are the right canton, so it's really based on the industry, on the cluster your company's in, I can answer this question only. Any other um, <laughs> answer would be a, a wrong answer in, uh, today, but maybe Andre could help me out with that. Look, I mean, I understand that you want a, a clear answer to that. Uh, my answer here is uh, Switzerland's business for, uh, open for business. You get very competitive tax rate in every canton if you have a good tax advisor. <laughs> but uh, this I can assure you. In terms of industry, I mean, if you're in the pharmaceutical industry, you want to be maybe close to Novartis. If you're in the commodities trading industry, you want to be close to Geneva, where you have all the commodities traders. If you want to be in the crypto industry, basically you go to Zug, and uh, if you want to be in the fashion industry, you go to Ticino. Actually, uh, largest fashion brands are all sitting in Ticino doing business with, with Milan. So it truly depends a little bit, you know, what industry you're in, but uh, in terms of taxes, labor regulations, flexible authorities, it's basically the same everywhere. It could, it could be also some language, uh, uh, language, language side, yeah, because uh, it's, uh, uh, in Switzerland there are four languages. It's uh, Germans, uh, German, Italian, French, and Roman. But everywhere you can speak uh, English easily. But probably you need, probably it's your, do you prefer some French or German language. I don't know what's, what's, what is your background. And probably f starting from... Uh, Zurich, you are going to expand to Germany or Austria, probably from this side of Switzerland could be more convenient for you. If you are going to, uh, I don't know, Italy, probably Ticino. If you are going to expand to France with your business, probably Geneva. Yeah, and it's also could be a reason to, uh, to choose. There was, there was something about taxation, languages, location depending on your type of business S probably rega regarding uh, if you want to immigrate <laughs> who knows if you want to open business. <laughs> eventually an open business, an open oh, business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, probably you would select French part of you would select French part of uh, Switzerland because uh, it's more likely that they would accept foreigners there uh, according to statistics uh, and for the rest I guess it's all quite the same but you always have to select uh, basically what you want to get so if you want to want to get banks it's going to be Geneva or close something close to Zurich because uh, still Switzerland is a small country but if you, you want recently get to offices of those companies etc to sell them something or to cooperate with them you have to take into account that it takes several hours to get from one canton to another roads are not so narrow <laughs> so probably just select something that is more convenient for your business and uh, from location perspective Hello, my name is Volodymyr Volgora, and I have a question to Patrick and Andre. 
Uh, first one to Patrick is more general one because uh, start a business is only the first step and the uh, main, main task is to build and scale it. And I have a question. Do you have in Switzerland some specific pro programs maybe to support the scale and growth of the business, of SMEs mainly? Uh, and uh, can, you, can you tell more about this if, if you have such? For pu from public sector and from private sector maybe. Uh, and a uh, question to Andre, uh, it's about the industry more. Uh, now we have in global scale, uh, main trend, ma trend makers for cryptocurrency is uh, Japan and Switzerland in some way. Japan already have some regulation and uh, uh, they quite, uh, uh, quite good, I think, for crypto cryptocurrency. And, uh, uh, what's the trend in, in Switzerland now in this way? How, t how there will be, what, what kind of relation there will be? What uh, way to uh, operate crypt crypto money and so on? And the uh, second question about uh, RegTech. Uh, it's a new, new, new maybe industry for, uh, for crypto, crypto world and uh, Big Four should be uh, particularly interested in, uh, in, the, in the experience in RegTech. And uh, for KPMG, uh, would you plan to uh, build your own capacity in this sector, or in, and in which way? Maybe it's through through uh, new startups, maybe through accelerators, maybe something else. Can you tell more about this? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. So I start with your first one to me. Uh, I can mention three private associations and organizations which su support you in, in growing in Switzerland. Uh, first one is Digital Switzerland. It's an initiative which is uh, three years old now. They have uh, every year an investor summit uh, in January in Zurich. Uh, if you can expose and, and uh, advertise your company or brand there, uh, there's they're inviting f global investors to come to Zurich to meet um, local companies uh, in the funding in the funding period. Secondly, the same organization that organizes this Kickstart Accelerator Camp. This is a place where you can apply now for next uh, summer and, and um, fall to be three months uh, residing in Switzerland, having workshops, having showcasing your product, your service to investors or to major Swiss companies to, to scale uh, your, your product idea. And the, the third organization would be a federal, a, a national one, but that requires you being present in Switzerland, so having a Swiss entity. It's when you would like to innovate and research parts of your product together with local universities. Uh, you can hand in your project to the government and they, they will evaluate if it's worthwhile researching on that. When they say yes, you get on the whole research uh, time, you do 50% uh, dedicated in time by students from leading universities. So you can cooperate your company with students from Switzerland and the student's time in Switzerland is paid by the Swiss government. The nice thing of this is that the intellectual property which comes out of that research, you can have that for yourself and it doesn't stay with the university like it is in the States. But that's an attractive model where, where governmentally you are supported um, for doing research in Switzerland. Is this for a first round okay? Half of it uh, maybe? Yeah, but more like business development. I don't know something similar that, like you were describing from the US. That some cantons have specific programs or by, by their cantonal banks, but it's not the general level on the national level. Thank you. No, my short answer to that is no. <laughs> so Switzerland uh, actually is a poor business country, low taxes, low government, less regulations. And that goes in both sides. But honestly, we get a lot of questions. You go to France, I mean, you, they will show you with money if you do some startup, the same as with in Germany. Uh, the real, real results, to my opinion, are not very convincing. So Switzerland truly is focusing on less regulation, low taxes, and little support. So governments you know, think that the government thinks that the companies should be the right their own. That brings me to your uh, other question about the regulation of cryptocurrencies. I know Japan has, uh, to my understanding, introduced cryptocurrencies as an official means of payment. We are far away of that. 
Swiss fin financial market regulators, they are about to introduce a new regulation for startup fintech companies with a sandbox uh, solution where up till a certain threshold, which is actually way low, uh, you know, you have some rel uh, relief on, on the regulations. That's, that's about what Switzerland uh, is, uh, is, um, is planning to do. So far, no uh, um, intention to use uh, cryptocurrency uh, um, on the federal level as, uh, as an official means of payment. Zug has introduced that, uh, uh, the canton of Zug. Uh, it's more, I would say it's more like a marketing gag because you can pay, uh, I think, your, your, uh, your speeding fines up to 20 francs with, uh, with cryptocurrency, but that's about it. So uh, it's still uh, in infant shoes. But again, here, um, if you're looking at the ICOs, Switzerland is taking this uh, uh, small government approach. As long as it's not wrong, government will not step in. And uh, as long as, uh, as you believe uh, your token is a commodity token, not a utility token, or not, not an equity token, Go for it. Uh, good luck with it. Uh, uh, it's your own risk. So that's our our approach. Now, wha your question was about the RegTech, regulatory technology, and if KPMG is uh, active in this field, uh, answer is yes. Yes. Uh, actually, we are um, you know developing proprietary technology, regula regulatory technology uh, in Switzerland. In our office, actually, we have developed uh, certain RegTech tools uh, uh, to make. Uh, uh, banks help to their clients to be uh, uh, in compliance with their uh, local uh, tax tax uh, uh, tax filing um, uh, needs. So we uh, have developed this software, actually actually selling it uh, currently in Switzerland and soon also around the world. KPMG has also uh, uh, introduced uh, um, blockchain nodes in uh, Singapore, in Frankfurt, and, and in New York. But our firm, KPMG Switzerland, is developing regulatory technology in-house. I can certainly give you more detail uh, after the presentation. And we did not discuss them before, so it will be kind of a surprise. I heard from some of my, I know, I mean, I have some acquaintances who set up, uh, rep, rep, let's say, virtual rep offices in Zug. Means it does not need them to invest 20,000, it does not need them to go through all these legal frameworks, but they can help have kind of easier and like light setup at least to try, and I know some startups who did this, Ukrainian startups. And the question is? You, the question is to both of you, have, have to get into this opportunity and uh, what, uh, like what is the legal framework for this, cost of this, and uh, would you recommend this or no and why? So, so your question is how complicated it is to start a rep office in Switzerland, right? No, no, I know no. that um, there are a legal framework yeah, to have kind of collective, I don't know, to, to switch into collective company. Yes. Yeah, so it's much more, uh, I mean, it's cheaper than uh, go to with Jim yeah? LLC or O, as we know. Yeah? Yes, I so mean there are easier, there are different ways have to go have to start with Switzerland. It's not, it should not be necessarily GmbH with 20,000 investments. There are also True. other opportunities True. have to start to do this. This is for the beginning. So can you please, because maybe some of yes. people here there might need to know about tool to begin and then to explore. I mean, you, don't, you do not have to incorporate like an RG with 100,000 minimum capital or a limited liability company with 20,000 uh, capital, this is still expensive. You can just have a representative working for your company on his own account in, out of Switzerland. Uh, that's actually quite often that, uh, especially software service providers, software companies, they have a rep. Uh, one representative, he's actually working by his own. He doesn't have a uh, need to incorporate, but he's still tax liable. Uh, that's that's a possibility at the beginning. Then you know after you know it, 
you know, business starts to pick up, we definitely recommend to incorporate with a limited liability company. This is 20,000 Swiss francs, uh, not too much of a money. Uh, but then uh, it's also easier for the entire taxation purposes because if you are in Switzerland with a rep representative, of, uh, with a representative, you're creating a so-called permanent establishment, and the tax authorities will come to with you and asking you, can you show us your, uh, your your sales and how much profit you are generating? So, um, but at the beginning, you can have uh, just a representative working for your company and selling the products in in Switzerland without incorporating. So it means for some cases it might not be so expensive as expected. Oh, we have a question. Wonderful. On the BEPS, base erosion profit shifting. What's that? Yeah, the BEPS, yes. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I can gladly explore that uh, 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 for hours. The short note, uh, the short comment on that is OECD has introduced some uh, um, regulations um, starting a few years ago called uh, to avoid base erosion and profit shifting. And uh, the EU has also put pressure on certain jurisdictions, including Switzerland, Ireland, uh, Luxembourg, and others, which are well known for, uh, um, for offering uh, quite competitive tax regulations. Switzerland uh, has tried, actually, this spring, right, to change its tax law. Uh, in Switzerland, you have to do a, a public vote for everything, especially if it is important, and tax law is important. So we, the government made the suggestions how to amend the Swiss tax regulations to be in compliance with the BEPS requirements. This uh, actually, this uh, proposal by the Swiss government was actually not accepted by the Swiss population. So uh, everything went back to square zero, and we are now working on the so-called Tax Reform 17, which will uh, 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 actually make sure that the Swiss tax uh, system is in compliance with the OECD regulations. We will abolish the most uh, um, popular uh, tax regimes for international companies called the mixed company, and it will be replaced by new solutions. Bottom line is, uh, cantons have decided to lower their corporate tax rate to around uh, 13 to uh, 12 uh, percent. So at the end of the day, if everything goes well, then the Swiss population will accept the tax rate as of 2020 will be as low as it is now. But if you want to have more details, more, more than happy to discuss that with you later on. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, so we've got the feedback from uh, the Swiss part. And right now, I would like to ask a question regarding companies who are set up in the offices, headquarters in Switzerland. How it helped actually to develop and to grow your company when you have a uh, headquarter in Switzerland? So why you decided to, not you, I mean the, the, <laughs> the companies to register and to set up the offices in Switzerland and how it helped to develop your business? Like um, embed a second part about have have what are Im your impressions about Swiss companies have to work with them what what level you have to deliver right this is the second part <laughs> so okay so why would you need an office there and if really an office there at least an office first thing is that uh, if you run through some RFPs from big companies I mean really big companies like Fortune 500. Uh, so you will find there that some of them wouldn't operate with you if you are located in risky zones at all. I mean, Russia for some, Ukraine for others, etc. So uh, eventually it was a nice event one day when Ministry of uh, Foreign, foreign I, I don't remember the name of your ministry that deals with foreign deals, uh, they made a demand to their businesses to uh, make aware or all of their employees that Ukraine is dangerous country. That's pity. And a lot of other countries are doing the same. And uh, for people living there who are watching TV, CNN, etc., they see that those countries are dangerous. 
And of course, it's much more easier to operate with those companies when you have an office in Switzerland, because it's secure, nothing bad actually <laughs> happens there. It's a good country, that's the first thing. Second thing uh, is procurement at checking this stuff, really, really checking. And you, if you have a company there, if it's, you're a big company, you have a company there, it actually means that uh, there is some liabilities and you have some, you're not actually putting 20,000 of francs in your bank. It means that you have to put much more. I'm not, I don't think it's legal, uh, legally promoted or something, but you will do it. You'll have to do it. And if big company have an office there, and you came from that office, it means that your company had some money to respond to bad things that you can bring to your clients eventually. So it's, it's a reputational thing, mainly. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, just to compare with UK because uh, I have very nice experience with them. So if you had no, if you had no this nice uh, blue ticket from court, uh, when your clients actually want to see you there, you are not operating there probably more than five years. So it, it's a big difference comparing to UK. In UK. Uh, it's highly regulated, really highly regulated, and uh, it's very—it's really very different from governmental perspective. So in Switzerland, it's very easy to stay there and to operate there. And of course, taxation. So come on, it's, I, I don't think there are some other uh, so good from uh, environment, from I don't know, from. Uh, uh, digital systems, etc. countries. Yeah. Okay. I think that everyone heard. Thank you. Um, I would say that first of all, to develop your business, first of all, helps your strong business plan, uh, strong marketing strategy, and your sales. It's not Swiss around itself, yeah? And afterwards, with uh, all of the stuff, you can go to Swiss around anywhere in the world and be successful. In Switzerland, uh, it's a huge, it's a big hub of international companies. Many international global companies have a headquarters in Switzerland, in different parts of Switzerland, in Geneva, in Zurich, uh, in uh, Lugana. But uh, 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 registering the business in, in Switzerland, you are you're in the club of big guys. And to establish uh, business relationships with uh, your potential clients who are uh, who are well known globally and uh, it's much easier so it's it, it helps to uh, develop your relationships it helps your network to build your network and helps to for your sales yeah and of course taxes of course uh, very well regulated uh, Mm, very well regulated uh, all rules yeah, and, and well, rule of games, of economic games, and uh, it helps. Yeah. Maybe I add something to that. I mean, uh, I'm actually not representing Switzerland, I'm representing KPMG, and, <laughs> and, and that's important to understand. And what you said is absolutely true. Uh, together with Patrick, we did a, a study last year on the international headquarters in Switzerland, and we identified roughly 250 to 300 large multinational headquarters, whether they are Swiss uh, companies or foreign companies. We mentioned Amgen or, or Biogen, but there are many more. And for us as a service provider, I mean, this is a, an ideal environment because many of the, of the, of the buyers, uh, for instance, of US groups, which have their international European headquarters in, Swiss, uh, in Europe, they are sitting in Switzerland. So it's a, it's a huge market for, for service providers like us or probably also like yours. So starting in the service business, when you want to talk to multinational companies, it, it's a great location. I mean, you can sit in Zurich, in Zug or in Geneva and you're in walking distance with the largest uh, companies in the world. But I really think back to your question, uh, being personally present as a company, meaning having also funds invested in the country, having shown a commitment, financial commitment, 
but also having the conviction of being long term there to to help grow and support and do sales and after sales and you know drawing up at networking events building up that relationships back to the swiss culture question you posed so we need to see you regularly it's it's uh, based on meeting each other regularly and you only can do that when you're present physically and by doing that you need some funds that's true to to invest in the money to take the risk also to invest that money but future and long-term relationship will will pay that back by far but it needs an initial investment in time conviction and 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 money to be successful in switzerland so without it it's hard to do business i think especially specifically with swiss because we you know um, we grew up like many other countries on, on farms and we believe what we see, so we need to see you <laughs> to believe in your product. It's uh, something in common in between Ukraine and Switzerland, right? Agricultural background. And maybe in 200 years we can come to that. Uh, about the culture... Hmm? No, I believe that. <laughs> about the culture a question, right? So you can go there, you can start to work, the country is open, business is open, you have, a, you have clusters, you have associations to support this, but also yeah, it's, it's the, the, the most difficult part starts with the uh, expectations of those big companies and Swiss companies in terms of deliverables, in, term, in terms of quality and time, right? It's a bit different, it, 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 it's, a very, it, it's very high standards work, and of deliverables, right? So how, 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 how it works for you? Because you work in between, your teams are located in Ukraine. You work with Swiss clients. How you deal with that? How you, uh, how you um, manage to deliver high quality and meet expectations to stay for a long time? Because it's essential, right? To be. So for us, we've started to work a bit, I guess, earlier than we opened office in uh, Switzerland. And uh, we actually were built as an Eastern European outsourcing company. And for us, quality is actually one of the key uh, comp competitive uh -huh. differentiator on the market, comparing to India, China, some Indonesian and etc. markets that are much cheaper than Ukraine. After that, it's in Poland. We have big offices in Poland, etc. And uh, to get to this level of quality, company had to invest quite a lot in this. Uh, we have, uh, we, the company had invested in certification like CMMI up to fifth level. So it's, that's the highest. So with this uh, certification, for example, we can operate in a field of uh, health equipment, really. So like tomograph or whatever. Uh, we worked with aerospace uh, engineering area as well for quite a while. It requires this level of quality. Uh, and the uh, company is investing quite a lot in so-called uh, quality management uh, systems. So it's a framework for uh, making sure that company is delivering a uh, high level of quality of deliverables of any kind. So we have a lot of internal audits, etc. We are complying with these SOX rules because uh, Luxoft is a public uh, public company on in uh, USA right now, and SOX get some at least uh, some regulations what you have to build uh, to be a uh, company with good reputation on a stock exchange, and we are compliant with this stuff, and uh, etc. And of course. If you are like you are present in Switzerland, of course it's expected that you will provide the quality of Switzerland, like Swiss knife, Luxoft, eventually, and etc. And uh, on our management, it gives additional pressure, really to invest in this and work on it. And we have a lot of initiatives, really to make sure that we are bringing the best quality on a, on a market. Etc. And of course, it's money, it's investment, and again, it's more like reputation, as my colleague said. Uh, like you're in a company of big boy, boys, girls. Uh, you have really to deliver high level of quality, and and that's it. You have no other choice. If
if no, your reputation will go down very fast. Uh, GMS has a bit different, uh, different uh, experience. We are. Uh, we are working with global clients within around the world. We, are, we don't work. We don't work with uh, Swiss clients actually. We are Swiss, like Swiss company who are providing Swiss quality of services. Yeah, and uh, we Ukrainians who are registered company in Switzerland should uh, keep this renome of the Swiss company and Swiss service level of services and. Uh, be uh, 200 reliable and uh, so we we a bit like different uh, have different experience and uh, it's uh, it was uh, probably one of the most important uh, point for us to provide Swiss quality for because we are representing Switzerland for international companies, for international partners and clients to provide Swiss quality or in everything, in, uh, in, te in technical support and uh, kind of um, business uh, we are doing and partnership and s s providing servicing and et cetera. I have another question or you want to answer. I have a very interesting question actually. We thank you so much for we discussed it uh, before about um, what global tech companies are presented in Switzerland, right? Because it's essential part to develop business ecosystem and we know there are in Zurich are many of them. So um, can you please exp uh, explore? Yes, yes. Facebook, Google. Yeah, also in the study we made together, we, we could ask many international renowned companies. Um, it, they have, we have a long, as a country, a long tradition in also, you know, attracting international headquarters in different industries. Um, the, the life sciences industry, first of all, but then also in the information and communication technology. Um, various reasons, again, to be there. Um, <laughs> um, having access to leading research institutes, uh, one reason having access to international multilingual experienced talents there, um, because also by being in Switzerland, people speak two or three languages, you can also do some savings on recruitment uh, comparing to other countries, um, the accessibility of the country, the security for families coming with children, you know, you can go leave your children go b to school by bus, public bus, and you don't have to drive them to the school, bring them back. So totally new for, for some countries, uh, this experience, and the all over life, uh, life quality we have in, in the country. Um, you are in big cities and you have 10 minutes driving out of the country, you are in complete nature, in pure lakes, in pure air, in mountains. You have the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, you can recharge your batteries and go back to work Monday, like after a holiday. So many arguments for all those companies to be there and to steer their international business out of Switzerland. Um, they find their clusters, their peers, uh, all the big brands in the neighbors are, are there as well. And at the end, uh, it's the ecosystem which is driving all that. Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't talk too much about the big brands because we have here very important future brands, so let's address maybe the, <laughs> the questions and the particularities of uh, SMEs again.
Our, our company is helping mainly SMEs because the, the multinational companies they find their ways again with colleagues of, of, of uh, with Andre and, and his colleagues, but we so our service goes in the direction that we inform about uh, Switzerland. But for an SME, it's it's crucial to find the niche, the business they can they can sell to. I mean, if we can show up uh, data, you know, about uh, how many of these companies are there, how many of this technology. Um, the segment is, is represented in Switzerland. If this is a target market or if it's Europe-wise, you basically need to do the analysis of the market potential. We can, we can inform about the, the, the conditions in Switzerland. We bring you together with cantonal representatives. We more in detail will help you also free of charge to, to help you through the process and to show the, the local advantages to you help you setting up, help you getting the permits, help you through all that process. Th this is the, the national system and the red carpet approach we have towards everyone in this room. So uh, get, get to us and through us to the cantons where you can get more support even on your way uh, into Switzerland. Uh, one thing I, I, I wanted to uh, mention, especially in regards to, to startup companies and SMEs, uh, we talked a lot about uh, corporate tax rates uh, uh, what should not be forgotten is that the individual tax rates are quite competitive and that's what actually makes it quite attractive for these ICO companies which we mentioned but for also other startup companies. By the way, we serve a lot of uh, startups also, we have specific programs for that. Um, is that the, the founders, the creators, they, uh, you know, they decide that that might be a great place you know, to grow the business and also grow their personal individual income and wealth because the tax rate is quite competitive uh, compared to Germany or, or to France or the other places. So the combination of, uh, of, uh, of a highly attractive business environment combined with uh, attractive uh, individual tax rate makes it for some uh, startups uh, attractive to, to, to actually start then uh, or to grow their business via, via an entity in Switzerland. What is important and, uh, and we see that quite often is the intellectual property, the management of the IP nowadays all your companies here, but also in the five science company industry, uh, the IP, the intangibles are the main assets of your company. We are currently working, by the way, just for your information on, on the tokenization model, not for IT companies, but for biotechnology companies. And we're also looking into tokenization models for commodity trading companies. There's much more into a tokenization model than just you know selling a future algorithm or, uh, or whatever idea uh, um, in the IT world, we believe that there is a lot of potential in structuring uh, these, uh, these future revenue streams from the biotechnology and from the commodity trading industry. And here we're also working with startup companies in this field. I guess this last two points were kind of crucial, right? And important. And actually, we are running out of time. Yeah. So um, we would like to thank you for being here, for being with us, and thank you, our guests. Please welcome them in our city. They have. <laughs> thank you. Next.